are you, Mark? I'm doing well, Javier. How are thank you? Thank you very much for good. Thank you. Enjoying the day here in Napa Valley. I mean, excellent. We got beautiful weather. Yeah, and uh, even though this area was hit by very bad fires, this area in particular where we are, we don't see much effect of that. Huh? So it's it's kind of nice to see that. Right. So we're driving the new Honda Clarity Plug-in Hybrid, which is which is. We'll consider the third one, the second, or the first one of the oh, family. That's a good question. <laughs> uh, as you mentioned, uh, we're in the Clarity plug-in hybrid, and the Clarity series is comprised of three vehicles. Yeah. We have the fuel cell, which is the first one that was released, and then the Clarity, only in California, only in Oregon, Cal right? No, only in California. Only in California. Yes, the Clarity Electric presently is only in uh, California and Oregon. Okay. And the third in the series is this car, which is the Clarity plug-in hybrid, which has an all-electric range of 47 miles. So can we say that this has the advantages of both ends of, of I mean, not the, the fuel cell because that's a different uh, fuel that, that right. it uses, but uh, this this really gives you everything because it gives you range, it gives you power, it gives you correct driving. Yeah, well, the way we look at it is uh, it's a full-size vehicle. I mean, it's a five pa five adult passenger. There's You can sit three adults comfortably in the back. Uh, we provide you with 47 all-electric miles which is uh, enough to get most of your driving in. Mm -hmm. And uh, for those occasions where you need more, or if you just want to go on a trip, you know, we have a seven gallon gas tank, which gives us a total range EPA rated at 340 miles. 340, okay. So this morning we drove like a hundred miles. Yep, 98 and, uh, I believe. We came back with a battery with two miles of range okay. that we recuperated during the drive because we went down to zero. Right. We generated up to five and then we came back and it was two. But then the range shows a two a three twenty-four. So in Correct. theory we only used sixteen miles of the range. Yes. Even though we traveled a hundred. That's pretty amazing to even to understand. Yes. I mean it, it's one of those challenges. You know, one thing is when you see MPG on a vehicle, yeah. You know, use simple numbers, we see 30 miles per gallon available. And you know if you drive 65 on the freeway, you might end up with 35. Mm -hmm. And then if you drive aggressively, you might end up with 25. We have a similar thing here with uh, with a plug-in hybrid. But as I mentioned in my discussion this morning, this vehicle is always trying to find the most efficient way of driving. So sometimes it might throw in the gas, a little, little bit of the gas engine. Sometimes it's all electric. It's uh, It seamlessly transitions back and forth to make sure that you are being as efficient as possible even though I wouldn't I wouldn't do anything special like switching to the modes or anything that guys already like thinking for me yes the modes you can say hey I want to be for example you can put an econ mode you say when you do that you can say hey I want to be more environmentally friendly yeah so it's gonna keep you in EV mode longer so the only way to get it out of EV mode and econ is to put your foot the pedal all the way to the floor and actually when we talk about the pedal there's like a click in between yes. right like yes. you have to like almost pay attention to feel it right and what does that do so that trips it into hybrid drive mode which incorporates gas and electric okay and that gives us the full uh, range of uh, power yes uh, horsepower correct which is rated at 12 to total horsepower is rated at 212 the electric motor is rated at 181 but combined, I mean, the gas engine is more than uh, 30 horsepower. Mm -hmm. But together, when they're working together, the max horsepower output is 212. So we we might not get all that power at, depending on which correct mode we're driving. Yes. But if we push it, like, it's like obviously being an, an electric car, like the right. torque is immediate. Like you can really feel the. I mean, it's not a sports car per se, but you can have some fun with it too. Absolutely. That's one of the nice things about electric drive vehicles. Uh, is that at low speeds or at the different points, the electric motor has on to, has torque all the time. You yeah. don't have to rev up the engine to get torque. So you get that feeling in here, and you can hear a little bit of gas kick in yeah. there when you go through. And you know you just switch it to sports mode. Sport. So at that point, the gas engine kicks in a little bit earlier than the click point. Okay. But the, the also thing that you'll feel is your accelerated response is a little bit more aggressive. So with a three and a forty mile range uh, in this car, that should eliminate any doubts about uh, range anxiety and all those Absolutely. kind of things. But still, 
there's maybe customers that have never experienced an electric or a hybrid car that might still think like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? Yes. But that's like, I guess there's a small learning curve, like within a week, maybe you will figure out what to do, where to charge and all that. Exactly, and the you know, when you have an electric vehicle that's all electric, there is a lot more anxiety. Let's say there's no range anxiety. There's still by consumers going, what if I forget to charge? It takes this many hours to charge. What if I forget mm -hmm. this and that? So, you know, this having both modes, if you forget to charge, you can still drive the car just fine in gas mode. Yeah. The other thing is we have a great app. It's called Honda Link. Okay. And for this vehicle, there are special functions that are specific to the Clarity series. So one thing is you can program the app to tell you once you drop below a certain charge. So the app will here, we all have smartphones these days, and we look at the phone and it says, oh, Javier, don't forget to charge me, you know, I'm below <laughs> a certain charge. Yeah. And the other thing is, where to, where to charge? I'm out in the public. With the app, you can go in there and say, you know, where are charging stations? It gives you a radius, it tells you where they are. And you can tap on it and you can get some more ideas. Of, is it free? Does it cost money? You have those different and choices. And there are a few, a few, uh, businesses that have a free charging stations. I think uh, yes. Whole Foods is one of them. So uh, there's fast charging stations. So you go there, you do grocery shopping for 20, 30 minutes and you come back and it's, I mean, maybe not full, but like you get a little a, a little bit back. Right. Is that anxiety if you still have it. But the other thing is, you know, one thing that we're all conscious of is how much money are we spending. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of utilities today, they offer lower rates in the evening. So, for example, let's say your utility gives you a time of use rate that saves you significant money if you charge after midnight. And the last thing you want to do is, oh, I, you know, I have to stay up till midnight so I can plug in my car. Don't have to worry about that with this car. In the app, you can say, don't start charging till midnight. So oh, okay, you, so you, 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 you get home, plug it in? Plug it in, walk away. The walk car, away. So, basically what happens is, you plug it in, there's some communication, and it goes, the charger goes, hey, is this a car? car goes yes I'm a car and it goes do you want electricity and the car goes ah, I don't want any right now at okay. midnight the car goes hey by the way I'm ready for electricity now and then the electricity flows like I'm ready to, to eat dinner <laughs> yeah and then when it's uh, when it's fully charged it says okay I'm done yeah and it cuts it off this can be done in the rain there's no concerns about moisture or anything like that it's all the communication is low low electricity and then it's locked Speaking about charging, how long would it take to recharge the whole battery in a regular outlet like at home, like when the one you charge it, your phone? Yep, if you drive it down to completely empty, yeah, it's gonna take about 10 hours. 10 hours. So, I mean, if you go home, let's say at 7, 8 at <coughs> night, and you don't go to work the next morning till 7, it will be fully charged when you, oh, yeah. when you are out. Okay. Yes. That's one of the nice things. You don't have to spend any extra money for infrastructure at home. But if you drive a lot and you want a level two, that's going to give you a full charge in about two and a half hours. So speaking again about money, Absolutely. what's the full price about uh, for this car, and uh, what's where is it? Okay, where is it against the competition? So one of the things is that the Clarity comes in two trim levels. The, the standard trim, uh, the MSRP is thirty-three thousand four hundred dollars. Yeah, and that gives you a very nicely equipped vehicle. It gives you Honda Sensing standard. You've got Honda Sensing is all the safety. Yeah, feature, so but. that's the collision mitigation, mm -hmm. you know, the cruise control with low speed follow, lane keep assist. So it's the full assistive technologies for safety. Okay. It also includes Android Apple, I'm sorry, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. It does not include a navigation system, but with those but technologies, with that, you, plug it in and you, have you it. can see your Navi right on the screen. And most right people there. prefer that nowadays, I think. That's very true. And a few other things that it does not include. It doesn't include leather seating surface. It doesn't include this ultra suede here. And uh, it doesn't have power seats. So that's the 33,400. If you move up to the Touring trim, which is 30, uh, 36,600, you get the leather seating surface. You get the power seats. You get the embedded navigation. You get the ultra suede on the dash and the door panels. This material, is this wood or this is plastic? It's, a, it's plastic. But it looks really good, it I have really to say. These I mean, are all biomaterials. Yeah, better than actually real wood, I, I have yeah, to say. Yeah, it has nice grain texture yeah. to it. Absolutely. Or grain-like texture. And this car being a plug-in hybrid, does it get the federal tax incentive too? It is eligible um, for the federal tax incentive. And due to the size of the battery, it is eligible for the up to be up to 7,500. 
So we're talking about like <coughs> under 30 when you when you deduct that. Absolutely. So, and this goes against like the obviously the Toyota the Toyota Prius, Prius Prime, 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 the Chevy Volt, and against the Prius. So the Prime. Chevy Volt, even Chev Chevrolet doesn't really sell it like a plug-in hybrid. They claim it's a full electric, but it has a range extender. So right. it's the same thing, right? Yeah. Well, it's kind of the same similar. Thing. Yeah. The only the bigger the biggest difference is that. I can sit back here for oh, a long time right. without any problem. <laughs> yeah. I don't like it in the back of a Volt. Yeah, they actually, well, when they told us about that car, that they decided to make it a more premium car by having only four seats and eliminating the possibility of the fit. But in reality, this has much more space. Right. And, uh, and then that. And asked, you asked about the comparison. So the Chevy Volt has a little bit longer all electric range, it's up to 53 miles but uh, it has smaller trunk capacity, smaller space interior, and it's also less equipped. To get an equally or semi-equally equipped vehicle, you're looking at over $40,000 on the Chevy Volt, and you still have the size challenges, and you do get some of the safety features, but it's not as robust as the Honda Sensor. So again, this is uh, the third uh, member of this family, but this is only the first step for Honda to be, to electrify, what is it like? Two thirds of a whole lineup by what? Yes, 20, our, 30? our global vision is to have two thirds of our um, fleet globally electrified, and uh, what that means is all electric, hybrid, plug-in hybrid like this vehicle, and fuel cell. We're not looking at just one technology. Mm -hmm. We're looking at having something available for everybody. And when we look at the whole Honda Acura family, <coughs> the NSX has, has, has some of that. Yes. The RLX has some of that. So we're getting there pretty fast. Right. Huh? And, you know, the Acura side is going to be more tech, uh, more uh, performance based. Yeah. No, I'm saying yeah. in terms of the hybrid uh, uh, component. Right. And as market adopts to these electrification, you'll see more and more of the plug-in and other hybrid technologies going through the rest of our product line. Well, it's been a really nice day's drive here in uh, Napa Valley. I'm glad to see that it's not completely destroyed that some people <laughs> might think. Yeah. And uh, really enjoyable. So thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. And nice information you. about the Honda Clarity plug-in hybrid. My pleasure. 2018, right? 2018. Okay. And already on sale. Everywhere, been, every state. Uh, all 50 states, every dealership has received at least one vehicle. On sale date was, a few, was the end of last week on December 1st. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you.